What is up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. We made the playoffs. We made the wild card. And here's the highlights for that game. It's time to see if we are advancing for our first time to an actual series in, what, three seasons? Let's get into it. We got Dave Steve on the bump with Kenny Lofton, Paul Molitor, Larry Walker, Robbie Thompson, Kent Herbeck, Jeff Blauser, Mike Sosha, Tim Raines, and Phil Clark in our lineup. Shinsu Chu, Al Rosen, Nat Lashaway, Earl Avril, Manny Ramirez, Jose Ramirez, Rocky Calavito, Victor Martinez, and Omar Vizquel. This is a Cleveland Indians based team, now Guardians, also Spiders at one time. I don't think any of these guys were Spiders, but uh, I like it and I gotta love Shinsu Chu. But I hope he fails here. Let's get into it. Come on, Steve, we need you, baby. Partly cloudy, 70 degrees. 11 and 7 with a 339 ERA for Steve on the year. A, you know, a good, not great year. We want a little bit more there, and there's a ground out to open the uh, open the game up. Now, these are just the highlights, so we're going to move around in action. We're top two now. 2 0 count to Earl Avril. Comes a pitch from Steve. Oh, that's crushed. That's got to be gone. And it is. Oh, no, it's off the wall. I thought it was gone. But that's going to be a triple. Yep. And they're in business here in the second. That was destroyed. Easy triple there. So now it'll be two outs. One, two count. Please strike out Rocky Colovino. Come on. Oh, no. He's going to lace that one in the left field for an RBI single. That'll be one nothing. Rocky Colovino gets it done. And Cleveland's on the board early. We're jumping ahead now, so we got out of that. Bottom second, they got Corey Kluber. And it's a 1-2 count with Jeff Wilder on first. 1-2 count to Sosha. Let's see what Mike Sosha can do. Ground ball. Oh, gosh, that's going to be an easy double play, and it is. So two quick outs there. Snuff anything out before it can happen for the Red Bulls. Now we jump to the bottom of the third. Now Kenny Lofton's on base with Paul Molitor up. It's a 1-0 pitch coming from Kluber. And that's going to be a ground ball. That's going to be... Oh, that's an error. A diving play at third. Ramirez gets up, throws to second. It bounces off of the second baseman, Nap Lajaway. And both runners will be safe. Molitor and Lofton. We're in business now with Larry Walker coming up. 2-1 count from Kluber. That's going to be a fly ball. Deep to set it. Actually, not really that deep. Pretty playable. And it'll advance the runner to make it first and third with one out. But... Not enough done there. Or two outs, excuse me. 3 out to Robbie Thompson. Let's get a walk here. Oh, no, he's going to lace that one into the right field corner. That's going to score a run and tie this game up. Molitor will get to third. Thompson in at second. Molitor, oh, he goes through the sign. Oh, my gosh. Thrown out at home. What a play. What a play. What an absolute hose there. That was Chu and right to Lajaway to Martinez for the out. Molitor gunned down at home. I don't hate the send. He's a fast guy. We're an aggressive team. It's gonna it's gonna bite us sometimes. That's that's just a simple fact. Now we go top six. It's a one-one battle. Lajaway, or excuse me, Kluber and Steve have battled here. And Lajaway got a 3-0 count. He's going to lace one in the right field. That's, you get a 3-0 count, then you're going to get to lace one in the right field. That's the trend that we're seeing here. Base hit for Lajaway. It'll be Avril, who has a home run. In on the fists there on that 1-2 count. That's playable in center for Lofton. One away. 2-1 now to Manny. Very scary here. Manny Ramirez. Interesting. Only hit 7 -0. He had a disastrous season. 212, 282, 568 on the year and 551 at bats with just seven homers. What is up? He really that crummy? I think, uh, yeah, it's it's 2065, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so we can't see that bottom line there. That's not great. Is there anywhere I can put this where I could see that? No. It's just going to keep doing the same thing. Oh. Nope, that's just this year. I mean, this is this is the full year. I, I don't know why I needed to see it there. I, I just read it off. I'm an idiot. Moving on, 2-1, Manny Ramirez. Get this clown out. He's probably going to dominate now that I'm roasting him. Ground ball into right field. Wasn't even on a 3-0 count. That's going to make it for... Tag him, he's right there. 
I know the animations don't always perfectly match the action. Try not to get too hung up. Like sometimes they'll throw the ball in, your guy will be holding it at second. My dogs agree. And uh, it looks like they could just throw it home and throw them out, but they're running home. And it's like, they've smoothed it out though. In past years, it, it used to be way worse. It's a lot better now. By the way, we got two gold gloves there. If I see that right, Robbie Thompson and Kenny Lofton. So that's good to know. We're gonna get into the season review. Once we're done with the playoffs, we just gotta get through the playoffs, which hopefully culminates in a World Series victory. But we got work to do first and foremost right here. Manny Ramirez on first, top six. Rocky Calavito with two outs. What do we got? That's a shot in the center. That's gonna get to the wall. Oh my goodness. That's gonna score Manny Ramirez. And it's a RBI double there with two outs on Rocky Calavito. And they scored another that we didn't see. So now it's 3-1, we go bot six, 2-0 count to Ken Herbeck with Robbie Thompson on first. Let's get back in this. That's gonna be up the middle for a base hit. We're gonna have two runners on, and they're gonna be at first and third. Almost got ahead of myself with the two runners on thing. Runners at the corners, 2-2 count to Jeff Blauser. Need a base knock, baby, what do you say, one time. And he gets dusted for the strikeout. Brutal, brutal. We continue. Mike Sosha now 1-2 count to him. Oh, ground ball to first base, easy out. I was hoping that would get down the line and get past him. or score at least one. So we waste an opportunity. It's three to one. We go ahead in the action to the bottom of the seventh. So we're back up. Tim Raines now 3-1 count against Cy Falkenberg. Let's see what Falkenberg has. He's got a walk for Tim Raines now. Is he going to try to steal? I don't know if I like a steal here because... We don't, this run isn't as important. So I like the aggressive base running that we have, but I hope the game knows enough to not go too crazy here. Nope, they're immediately sending him. It's an easy throw. It's almost like I knew it was coming. I swear I didn't pre-watch to know that there was a, uh, a caught stealing there, but I was just, because we have aggressive setups, I kind of had a feeling and I'm super bummed about it because I would not send a guy there. And I, I have changed my innings and run. Like, I mine is meticulous, y'all. So I really don't like that send. That's frustrating. We got another opportunity, though. Bot seven still. Kenny Lofton now on second with Paul Molitor at the dish. It's a 1 0 count. Molitor rips one into the right center gap. That's going to be an easy run, possibly a triple here. Definitely a double for Molitor. He's hustling. He's going to slide in with the double. And it's 3 to 2. Would be 3 3 if Tim Marines had tried to steal. Butterfly effect, you don't know how everything plays out, but frustrating. Larry Walker, a chance to tie this up, though. 3-1 now. Come on. It's against the lefty, but that's okay. Dave LaRoche is very good, but let's... Long fly ball. Nope. That's going to stay in the field, isn't it? It is. Dang. I, I got excited for a second because he really put a charge into it, but turns out didn't even get to the track. All right, so we go top eight. They're Kenny Lofton. It's come uh, came off the bench, it looks like. Yeah, he was a pinch runner, so he's at second. Rocky Calavito at first, Victor Martinez up. Two outs, 2-0 two -oh pitch, coming from Bruce Ruffin. Oh my goodness, do we need an out so badly here. And we're not gonna get that. We're gonna get the direct opposite. We're gonna get a laced shot into the right center corner, or into the right center uh, gap. Easy, two runs. And it's 5-2. With the Victor Martinez two-run double, that's rough. That's devastating. That might be a kill shot, folks. Robbie Thompson up now, 3-0. Get a rally started. Okay, let's go. Come on now, we got this. The thing of it is, we had a good offensive season. So we can still get back in this. Kent Herbeck, oh man. Uh, this sucks that LaRoche is in. We're not very good against lefties. But Kent Herbeck says, yes, I am. Base hit in the right. A lot of damage in the right field this this game for both uh, both ball clubs. Thompson gets first to third on that. We like that. Again, not really. I don't know how close it is in real life. Like we'd have to see what a real life play would look like. Might be overly aggressive against Chu. I I, I hope that that was the right decision there because I, I say that I mean from the process standpoint of like. Generally, if you're making the first out at third when you're down three, that'd be such a disaster. So hopefully it was just an 
easy single that would normally get somebody first to third and he wasn't pushing it. Uh, Jeff Blauser, another opportunity to be to be great here. By the way, we've outhit them 10 to nine, but it doesn't matter if your hits aren't the right ones. Can Blauser get something going here? 1-0 pitch. And that's gonna be a ground ball double play. Devastating. It'll get a run in, but man, at what cost? Uh, two outs, that's, that's the cost. And that'll do it for that inning. It'll be Scott Terry now facing Nap Lajolet in the top of the ninth. 0-1 count here. Terry, please make quick work of these guys. That's not quick work. That's a base hit in the left. I wasn't encouraged when I saw it was just an 0-1 count. If you watch enough of the highlights, you, you start to notice some of the patterns. And you hope they can be broken. Like you get a two, uh, an 0-2 count with your big strikeout guy and two outs. And runners on, you're like, okay, here comes a strikeout. And they hit a three-run homer. So it's not like it always happens the same way, but you start to at least uh, understand the probabilities. Like, well, he's probably striking out. All right, bot nine, Tim Raines, get a starter, baby. And then don't steal, you doof. Willie Mitchell coming in, and that's going to be a fly ball to center. Very playable for one away. Oh, my goodness. Need two more runs at least. If not, let's just get three. Let's just win it. Let's just walk it off before two more outs. Actually, before one more out. Shit, here comes Kenny Lofton. 1-0 pitch. That's a shot. No, that died. Oh, my God. Off the bat, I thought that was a, a gap shot. And we're going to lose the wild card game. So our playoff run is short. A 5-3 loss. A very competitive game. You know, that's the tough part with the wild card, right? Both teams played their butts off. One of them has to go home. It just so happens to be us. I'm not thrilled that it had to be us. Dang it. So there's the short-lived uh, playoff run. Now it's time to review the season, open these packs, and see what's what's up with upgrades. We went 94 and 68 and, um, and earned that wild card spot. We faced... The other wild card team there that went 86 and 76. So we had a markedly better record, but once you get in that wild card game, it does not matter. We had a we had a six game win streak at the end of the season. That was pretty excellent. And then it was derailed by by uh by Cleveland there. But yeah, we played well down the stretch. 18 and 9. Actually, no no no. 21 and 9. You gotta smush. They should do September slash October. Can, can we get that, y'all? And if there's ever a March game, March slash April, just mix up. Because we just say September, even when we're talking about three, four games in October. Just put September slash October. Don't make me do the simple math. I'll probably mess up. I'm like, oh, we went 24 and 9. Like, no, you didn't, Paul. 18 plus 3. Try it again. So the offense. First and average. Second and on base. Sixth and slug. Mission accomplished, right? Our big goal this year was to add power to this to this power deficient ball club now slugging uh, you, you still need to look at the iso right we're still talking about a 127 iso which is not great our batting average doing a lot of work there um 799 uh ops though was third and you know we still have we're still 15th in homer so it's not it's it's it, there's some extra base power because we're fifth in extra base hits but then the homers are still lacking and that's okay it's a step forward though this was a power deficient team year after year but it worked early on because we were that slap hitting speedster team good defense well actually no not good defense that would have been that would have been the full profile there if you do the the like 80s 1980s royals cardinals type team where you're speedy defenders uh but we were speedy with good pitching and and the defense was the fact that it was mediocre didn't hurt us too much same with the power then we get into bronze we get, get punched in the mouth a little bit and that lack of power leaves it so that we have to you know every comeback has to be a rally uh generating several runs type deal and and that's that's too tough so then you look here at the pitching it's all pretty solid except for the babbit was a little high because the defense was still not great now it wasn't as bad believe it or not uh we've been We've been finishing last sometimes in our uh, deficient in our conference for defensive efficiency, but the zone rating went up uh, for sure. So again, a step forward. It wasn't all going to be fixed with two players. You know, Robbie Thompson and Larry Walker weren't just going to magically fix those things, but we made some strides. Let's take a look at the offense by uh, on a player level here. The catching tandem ended up being pretty good. 
uh, or the catching trio, I should say, because Phil Clark joined the team, ended up uh, with some DH. You know, I, he might have sprinkled in a little catching here and there. But you see 104 OPS plus for Booney, 98 for Phil Clark, and 106 for Mike Sosha. By the way, if you're noticing that this is not my normal view, I had to restart my, comp my computer, like wipe it and start it fresh. Lost all my stuff like that. Uh, so I got to remake those and I put a lot of time in all of those and I had all sorts of different ones and I just I just didn't want to do the undertaking right now. But OPS Plus gets us where we want. I like WRC Plus and I like a few other things like strikeout rate and walk rate instead of per nines. It, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll get the gist of our, of our season story here with these numbers. No problem. Ken Herbeck was, you know, solidly average as well. Really shouldn't be playing against lefties at all, it seems. Which is weird because, like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is great. Because I know it's not. But is it, is it that bad? I mean, if he's just facing devastating lefties, though, you, you have to think about that more as, like, um, you know... If 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 they if all the dime if it's all like diamond and gold lefties they're facing and it's not literally all but if it's consistently diamond and gold lefties, this all of a sudden, you know, is is pretty bad against a diamond. This is like a silver output and how often do silvers dominate diamonds? Not that well, um, or not you know not consistently. So it makes sense, but uh, uh, it's tough. It's tough there, and that's why I, that's why I brought Phil Clark back. And he was above average against lefties. So he, he did what I needed him to do. I had him playing first there. I still mixed in Herbeck a little bit. But maybe maybe it's just if the starter's tired. Maybe he just doesn't need to be in against lefties unless it's a must situation. We got Reynolds off the bench to you know come in, knock a base hit here and there, play a little defense. He's a little superfluous though. Robbie Thompson came in, had a great season, five wins. Um, and Reynolds can only play second, so it's not like he's bouncing around the infield. We need more of a true utility player. Uh, if there's a silver utility player that you like from the 80s or 90s, please recommend them because I need to start looking for one. I'd like to get somebody in there that can play second, third, short, or at least second and short, ideally with, with some strong defense. And then Paul Molitor, another excellent season, seven war. He did get caught 20 times, so um, what's that? I... I'm, some of you math folks will be like, come on, that's the easiest thing, but I can't do that in my head because I'm stupid. 73% there. So he's right there where he needs to be. That's not so bad. So I saw 20 caught stealing, and I thought that's probably pretty bad, and that's because I don't do percentages very well in my head unless they're super easy. I'm dumb. Uh, but yeah, 73.333. That's fine. 70, 70, 71, 72% is like what you want. Uh, to be successful statistically, so in terms of like a run expectancy uh, idea. So 73%, we'll take it. Jeff Blauser, solid three win season, 112 OPS plus 151, by the way, for Molitor, 114 for Thompson. I don't think I said their numbers. Not that y'all can't see them, but some of y'all, you know, probably do second screen where you're not watching everything you're listening to me so i gotta fill in the gaps there notice we had nobody with even 15 homers oh you know what you know what i just realized a lot of that could be our home park uh let's do road mm, nah, i think it's just a lack of power because even if you take some of these road numbers and double them up you know just do the lazy math of like doubling them up it's it's the same thing so it's it's not our home park it's really not. They're hitting more at home. So, okay, that's fine. It's all right. Like, we can be successful. We just made the playoffs. Like, we don't have to have power. I wanted more than we had, and I probably still want another tick up. Like, in the next few moves are going to be power, power-based upgrades. But, um, you know, I'm... I'm I'm considering something. Because I kind of... I want to keep... I want to keep the Tim Raines uh, trajectory going. But I want to use that Cal Daniels. If you didn't watch last, I think it was last episode where we uh, dove in on Cal Daniels a little bit because I bought the card because I thought it was a good price and I, I was thinking about upgrading him until Larry Walker came out. And I want to use him now because what an interesting story. I want to dive more in about him, talk about him. So we got to get Cal Daniels on this team. Maybe, we, maybe he's just the DH. 
maybe we just do that. I mean, that's a, that's a robust DH to put a diamond there, but I don't know. Anyway, let's continue with the ball club here. Jose Vizcaino, perfectly capable utility guy. I want somebody a bit better than him. Um, actually, maybe, maybe, maybe we're fine. I mean, if there's a silver out there that you like that's maybe a better hitter, okay. But he does fill the role that I'm looking for here. Should probably give him the reps at third. Yeah, he, he's, he's whatever. He had 95 plate appearances. He didn't hurt us. Nice season from Tim Raines, by the way. I don't know when we're going to make the upgrade to his next one. Maybe one more season here with the gold. He's been 114, 127. He's been playing well. So, you know, I say at least one more season with the gold. Maybe two, and then we'll move up to the diamond. I don't even know what I have to do for that, too, by the way. I should start looking into getting that completed. We got plenty of points, so we're fine there. Four win season, but then Lofton, of course, God tier. Did he get? Did he get it? Did he get an MVP? Whoops! Oh God, didn't mean to go in there. Sorry. He had an 11 WAR season. It might not be enough, but he was. He's back into like the elite elite. Where are we going? Oh yeah, I guess we can look at this. Are we in NC? I think we are. Oh, no, by this, yes, because we did have gold glovers. We have Robbie Thompson and who else did I say? I mentioned both of them. I thought we had two. I thought we had two guys with the little the little gold thing by them. Is that not what that meant? This? Yeah, great club award. Did Lofton not get one? Am I blind? No? I thought I said Thompson and Lofton. We have two gold glovers. Am I crazy? I mean, I am crazy. I mean, he has one best fielder. It apparently wasn't this year. Oh, maybe it was the platinum. No, it was a gold little thing. Oh, he did win the MVP, by the way. Let's go. That's what I was looking for anyway. Who cares about your stupid gold glove? Give me this. No. No. Right here, the top one. I literally clicked everyone but the right one. Look at that. Another MVP for Kenny Lofton. He gets back up to 11 war, which led the league. Like he had down years at six and seven wins. That's hilarious. Spiked up some power with 11 homers, 91 ribbies, 92 walks to 73 strikeouts. That's insane. 92 steals. He just stole every time he walked. 22 caught, uh, 352 average lead baseball, 437 OBP, 541 slug. Just unbelievable. I love this card so much. I'm so glad we made him the overall captain of this team. He's just been so much fun. Loved watching him when I was younger. He was just such a fun player to root for. And this is so great having him. He's not, he's never leaving this team. He's here forever. And I couldn't be happier about it. Thomas Howard in a backup role was meh. He did swipe 20 bags, so he had a little fantasy goodness for those of you in deep leagues. I know some of you are playing a fantasy league based off of this. I'm just kidding. Nobody's doing that. They shouldn't be. Because I don't show you any of the other stats. How would you keep track of all the stats? Uh, 76 OPS is obviously not great. It's fine. He's our fourth outfielder right now. We're gonna He's going to stick around, I think, one more season. Then he's probably going to get replaced. I really, I really liked what he did for us early on. And so I've been having such, uh, you know, positive feelings about him. Maybe it is time to replace him because it's been three seasons now where he's just, he's worn out as welcome and that's okay. We knew that some of these bronzes that we'd fall in love with would eventually move on because uh, the leagues would just get too hard for them to stay, stay contributors. All right, so we got Larry Walker here and he, and he had his first full season and it was good, you know? And I know when you say that with that with that up tilt lilting voice, like it was good. It sounds like you're shit talking it. I'm not. It was good. For war, nobody's upset by that. Do I want him to have some dominant seasons? Yes, I really, really hope he does because I liked Larry Walker almost as much as I liked Ken probably more than I liked Kenny Lofton, to be honest. Because I was a bit older, you know, coming into more of uh, branching out beyond my tigers for like favorite players and, and watching different things and following the game more holistically and Larry Walker was just a badass and his Colorado heyday you know coincides with my real uptick in fantasy so having him on fantasy teams where he was just absurd um, definitely cultivated my, my love of Larry Walker I was so glad when he made the Hall of Fame so yeah I'm hoping I'm hoping we can get even more from him but nobody's mad 
about a four win season. You know, he's out here at 11, eight, eight. That one dipped down because he was hurt, but nine. I mean, just, he was so silly in Colorado. He's, he was great in Montreal too, but then he broke free. And of course, Colorado helps with the environment. I know that, but it, does, it didn't make him. Like he was a great player and he got to go be in the best environment ever and stay great. Is there another Larry Walker, by the way? Is there a diamond that we can eventually upgrade to? Because I know it'd be maybe a little limiting to say this. I guess there's no other one anyway. <laughs> oh my God. Now seeing that at 42,000, knowing what I paid. I know when you go early, you have to get used to that. But no, I paid a lot more than that. Um, I, I said I was going to say it'd be a little limiting to lock in Lofton and Walker. If, if, if there was a Diamond Walker, if I just said that Lofton and then the Diamond Walker, those are two of our outfielders forever, it would really cut down the pool of players that we need to be cycling in. So I don't want to go too far with that. Kenny Lofton is the only guy who will never leave the team. That's, that's it. Anybody else has a chance to be moved on from. Um, because we want to try so many different players. You know, I, if I say Paul Molitor is never leaving the team, well then what about what about using Chipper Jones? I guess I could put him over at second, but we're trying to improve our defense and you know, his is not amazing. You know, he could be moved, I guess, so that wasn't a great example, but you get my point. I don't want to do that. So Lofton's the only forever player. And can he move anywhere else? That might be the one tough part. Is that ah oh, god, I wish he could play left. Uh, because then what? Are we not going to be able to get any other center field only players? Ugh. Again, might be a little limiting, but I don't care. I don't care. Kenny Lofton, never going anywhere. Steve Finley, what do you play? I like Steve Finley. Okay, he can play right. Kerbias can play right. Crazy Carl Everett, don't think we wouldn't put him on the team. We absolutely would. He can play right. He played good right. I'll put, Kyle, I'll put Carl Everett right right now. Don't make me. I don't know why I'm aggressive about it. There's no reason to be. Maybe I just channel my inner Carl Everett. Lenny Dykstra. I vacillate between wanting to put this guy on the team and then even though I, I think I've described this already on this channel about like he wouldn't get paid if I put him in or anything. We wouldn't we wouldn't enhance him in any way. But it's like, do I wanna do I wanna you know, almost support a guy like that? And again, it's not really outward support. We would talk about the the foibles of him he's a very very flawed person a, a dirtbag really right let's not mince words uh but the stories oh my god the stories we might have to put him on for at least one season just to kind of showcase him a bit and i'll tell you all some of the stories if you don't know already andy vance like he can only play center that's kind of a bummer because i'd like to use him he was a fun player um and i liked him he was the tigers coach for a while and so i like andy andy vance like a bit but that's all right. There's not too many guys that are, are shut out by saying we're never taking Lofton off the team. So that's good. Let's get to the pitching and then wrap up here and see what we're going to do for this year. Dave Steeb, our ace, stayed our ace. Uh, 339, you know, is a regression from last year. But come on, from 8.4 to 7.1 lore, we're, ace is going to ace, baby. We love what he does. Um, he's sticking around for another few years. I'm not going to say he's never leaving, but it's a lot easier to have like a one legacy starter because then there's still four, four roles to mess with. So that's probably the easiest position to say somebody might be here forever because you're not really cutting anything else off. He's here for now, and I don't see a, a, a future with him not here. But it's it's not it's not locked in. I don't know why I'm making such a big deal about this. Who cares if I say he's never leaving the team? And then three weeks later, I'm like, guys, we're gonna do something different. We're getting five new starters. You guys gonna bring this video back up? Like you freaking said, dude. You freaking said. No, nobody's gonna do that. So I'll I'll get off this point. Let's talk about Mark Langston. Debut season with the club did not disappoint, baby. 201 innings, 354 ERA, 137 whip, tracking a bit high, but all those punchies, man, he just said, I got it. And a lot of times we're going to have higher whips, partly due to the fact that our defense sucks. I think that's a big part of it and our home park. I want to check this one too. Let's see if I'm full of crap on that. The whips at home, let's just, let's isolate our starters right now because they got the bigger samples. The whips at home are 162, 144, 137, 136, 117. Only Steve is under 136 at home. And we play in a very hit-friendly park. Not necessarily homers. In fact, it, it's homer limiting, but hit-friendly. And then on the road, not now. Then on the road, 
Same thing, actually. Steve's the best, and then everyone else is like 137 or above. So, okay, it's not just our park, but you do see the home runs trickle up for sure between home and road. So, anyway, that's kind of the one issue is that our whips are a little high. So, that goes back to the defense. If you can't really blame it on the park, you got to look at the defense and our lack of uh, ability to consistently turn batted balls into outs will yield higher whips. Even Steve at 118 is too high for how good he is. Um, normally, I mean, you're talking much better whips and, you know, he had 109 last year. That's kind of the peak of what he can do with his defense. He spiked that 102. Part of that is the league that he was in though. In Stone, he's dominating lesser talent. Now that he's on a more even keel with talent, they're kind of catching up and putting up better whips against him than they probably should be. He should be 110 or below, but because of our defense, he's at 118. Langston was great. Nagy, 187 innings, 443, 150. Ooh. But kind of league average. He's our, I mean, he's our fifth starter in terms of talent. But I do have Alex Fernandez in the fifth starter role right now because uh, he was pissing me off. <laughs> to be honest, he ended up with a pretty good season. I'm happy here. 184 and a third of a 414 or 415, 151. But uh, uh, you see, he ended the season on fire. Don't know why I clicked the batting splits. I moved him to the fifth starter role after April. You see the 839 ERA. And um, it was coming off of, this was pretty mediocre season. This was a bad season. I was like, ah, he's the fifth starter. And it didn't matter because it just, it lowers the innings for sure. But I was fine with that because he was pitching poorly. But he finished strong. Speaking of pissing me off, but I didn't move him down because I, I, this one was more stubborn. I was like, this card is always so good to me in perfect draft. Why is he the worst right now? I refuse to budge, even though he had a 12.57 ERA in April. He got back on track a bit in May, but then went right back in the can in June. And I'm just like, gosh. But then he ended really hot, 177 in September. So that's really nice. Levon, I think we're going to make another starting pitching upgrade. And I think it's probably going to come at the expense of, of Levon. I, I just, I don't understand. I mean, maybe it's the extreme fly ball. Just, I mean... That's what it was in last year's tiny sample, right? He gave up 8 billion homers. But 1.0 homers, I guess, here's the thing. 1.0 is livable with like a 130 or below whip. But because of our team giving a higher whip and the fact that he allows an above average home run rate, that's maybe just too bad of a combo. And until we get the ability to to deliver better whips for our pitchers maybe he's just not a fit maybe he's somebody we even come back to down the line yes even as a silver and in a higher league i could see coming back to him when our team com composition is different but right now i just don't think levon's a fit i think i think we're going to replace him let's take a look at the relievers in innings order scott terry still our workhorse out of the bullpen 21 stamina i'm not afraid to use it he's been excellent in his career for us he has the one down season that's just a a range of outcomes volatility deal you can really look at his five seasons and understand the volatility of of reliever seasons very well in just this one snapshot he had the 209 era that first season 106 whip and i understand league context has changed a little bit um but but even even ignoring that for a moment like relievers you take five seasons of them fully healthy this is the kind of stuff they can do. Even really good ones. Now, he's not an elite one, but even really good ones are so sample size dependent uh, or, or they're at the mercy of it where three bad outings can like sink you for the whole year type of deal. But anyway, his extreme ground ball tendencies actually probably aren't a great fit for the team because of those hits that, that we allow. But he makes it work because he keeps the ball in the yard and he keeps his walks relatively limited. So he's been very successful. He's actually not set up for success because we don't have a great defense but it hasn't hurt so i appreciate that from him dustin hermanson transitioned into the bullpen and finally had a good season or or a decent one at least a bounce back i guess he wasn't terrible last year it, honestly 2063 really sticking in my craw there with uh hermanson and fernandez i'm judging them heavily off those seasons still i need to move on it was just a disaster year but yeah, he's all right. He's still sticking with the team now for, for the time being. Bruce Ruffin, he was roughing it out there. <laughs> Stupid. Why did I say that? 493 ERA in 65 and two thirds. Another high, you know, you're just gonna keep seeing the high whips. 
The high whip, the high whip, the high whip. Jeff Robinson beat the whip monster though because he had a 226 bad whip. So he was he was pretty lucky. Let's let's just call it what it is. Pretty lucky. He has good swing and miss. And then the defense, they showed up for Jeff Robinson. And again, that that's volatility right there. That's positive volatility. 245 ERA, 0.99 whip for an excellent season. Let's see what Dibs is up to, this crazy MF. Okay, so he, he didn't keep the greatness going from last year, but he was he was the, the one who got the good BABIP last year, came back to 333, and so he was just good, not great. But that's kind of our pitching, man. And that's unfortunate. I, I want better pitching. I, I'm obsessed with pitching. Like That's like my favorite thing to study in baseball. So I want my team to have a better pitching identity. So I, I wonder, is it just the home park? Here's my home park settings, for those that don't know. We have, we have a, a, a hit-friendly park, like I said. I turned it up because we didn't have a lot of power. So this was for the initial build. And maybe we changed since our team is different now. Truth be told, peeling back the curtain, it's too late to change for this week. But uh, perhaps for the future. This is, this is saying that it's like that, but I haven't accepted the sim for a little bit. So it's not. So yeah, we have the lowest home run factor you can and then some pretty high hit factors i wonder if a ballpark switch but it's gonna have to be for 2067 um instead what do you think about that let me know i won't do anything yet even even for 2067 it's not set it's settled in stone curious what y'all think if that's the move and if that's why we're just stuck with these super high whips i mean let's look at some history of who else has been around for a while? 148, 180, 132. Like the first season was great. A guy's can a guy can spike a good whip every once in a while, but they don't they don't keep them. Nagy. Oh, this is the goal, Nagy. I'd have to find the silver. Hermanson. That's kind of I mean that kind of did him in to be honest. And he's a silver, right? He wasn't gonna be in the rotation forever, but. The whips with the with the home runs, he just had to go out of the uh, out of the rotation. So yeah, I think um, we're not gonna make too many sweeping changes here. I think we're gonna take Levon off the team for a new starter. We'll go in the market and see about that. And I think I think Cal Daniels is gonna join the team. And. Thomas Howard. We're gonna go a diamond, a diamond, uh, bronze to diamond upgrade. And I think he's gonna become our DH. Maybe that's for the better. You know, I was worried about fitting him in somewhere uh, in the outfield. He's not very good, so he can just be a DH. I mean, it's it's our team probably isn't good enough to afford, so to speak, a. Um, a, a diamond DH like we should probably have all the positions filled in before we're doing a diamond DH but let's have fun with it I don't know if I ever showed that uh, Ruben Sierra got a half season was it a first half or a second half I can't remember I think it was the first half and I cut him off the team midway through I don't know if I ever followed up to show y'all that he was terrible it was unfortunate I wanted him to be better and we have so many guys that struggle against lefties that I thought having him might be nice to give us something against lefties. That was not the case, folks. Twasn't the case. All right, so Thomas Howard. Actually, do I have to wait till I get the refresh sim? I mean, I, I'll try it like this, but it probably won't take until I download the latest because I'm like multiple behind. Put him there. Oh, the only problem is we don't really have a backup outfielder that can like go into the outfield <laughs> huh can we address that yes we can we'll replace harold reynolds with somebody who can play center field a, a silver type hopefully some utility beyond that but that's that's the main goal Cal Daniels hit lefties. Not better than Herbeck. He does take a hit, but it's not crazy. 
He is going to start against lefties. Not Harold Reynolds. That, wait. Did they think I was trying to put him in right field there? That was annoying. Yeah, we'll, we'll put him there. He can bat fourth. Um, Ken Herbeck can be there. Phil Clark. Where did you go? He can be the corner back up right now. We'll see who we get off, off the market here. We'll submit that. We'll see if that sticks. That I might have to redo it after we get the fresh download. All right. Um, let's yeah. Let's put center field as a, as a primary. Let's see what we can find. If there's somebody who can play infield, outfield, that would be amazing. That would be true super util. Otherwise, it's looking like it's gonna be Mitch Webster because speed and defense are strengths. And coming off the bench, I like that. I don't know Dave Gallagher. I think Jim Eisenreich's a hitter with no defense. I remember him. Good hitter. But the defense was not there. So maybe Mitch Webster. Oh, maybe just bring back Roberto Kelly, to be honest. That might that might be the easy fix. He's not a particularly good defender, thanks to his arm mostly. But he fits. Probably that. Rich Becker. I remember Rich Becker because I used to play this game called Front Page Sports. Kind of a predecessor to this game. Some of y'all might remember it. It was a simulator. Um, it was really cool. Uh, and there was an online league. And this guy this guy ran a great league. It was, it was deep. Meticulous. Signing contracts. All sorts of trades and, and caps and things you had to manage. Like You really had to manage the team. It was awesome. It was so fun. Rich Becker became an absolute god in our league. He started, you know, down at this level, like uh, somewhere in like the 60s, but he just developed and became so good. And that's why I always remember Rich Rich Becker fondly, even though overall in real life, he didn't really pan out that well. Let's go to shortstop real quick. See if there's a shortstop with some infield outfield capability. Pat Listash, did he play the outfield? No, who am I thinking of? Was there a Milwaukee speedster infield outfield? Nah. In Stankowitz. Stankin. 1980s? That's the guy. Jeff Kunkel. That's the freaking guy. I mean, that's perfect. Like, his, the defense is not great. I don't love the play profile, but in terms of the fit, this is a bench guy. It is perfect. Welcome to the team. Like, come on. Hello, can you click the button, Paul? Uh, yeah, like that just, that could not be more of what I was looking for. Why complicate it? Why not just do exactly that? Where'd you go, Jeff? Boom. Get cunked. Do you think he said that whenever he did something good? Ooh, you just got cunked. And everyone just looks at him like, what? You got freaking cunked, dude. Okay, dude. Yeah, Jeff's still trying to do the cunked thing. They all talking behind his back. We told him it's just not cool, dude, but he just, he, he thinks it's, he got shirts made. It was the 80s, he would definitely get shirts made. And now, if you get one of those shirts, they'd be so sick. You know, I'll, I wish that I still had all the sports shirts from when I was young because there's some awesome ones now that would like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell them, but they would go for so much at, uh oh, did I mess up? I did. Oh no, it shut down. Well, that'll get a, that'll get a fresh, that'll get a fresh download in. I tried, I tried to enlarge it because it had the little square where you, with the double square. Anyway. But like all the shirts that I used to get at this place called Dunham's in Michigan and like with like the cartoon heads and shit, that stuff, that stuff is so popular on like vintage and thrift uh, Instagrams and things. And I just, I wish I had that stuff still. All right, we're, it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. So we're going to be deep into the season. Let's see where we're at. Let's get an update. I was going to wait till we had the new crew all together. Again, we'll see if that even stuck the move I did make. We might have to make it all again. Uh, but yeah, man, 
I do have one, and I don't, I'm not saying it would all still fit, but I do have one shirt that made that made it through all the years. It's a Roger Clemens Boston Red Sox shirt, and it still fits. It's like clearly smaller. It's not a great fit, but it still fits. All right, so we got to make the moves. We're 11 and two. We're off to a wonderful start. We'll dive into that a bit more here in just a moment. Let's get Cal Deasy back in the, in the mix. He's starting a little late. That's okay. That's okay. We had to work on the deal. Thomas Howard, thank you for your services. You were wonderful for most of your time here. Or half your time here, I guess. It's kind of a 50-50 split. But he fulfilled the role that he was asked. You know, even as the backup outfielder, we weren't asking him to be great. We, we didn't have crazy expectations on him. Where's Kunk? I'm trying to get Kunk. Is he inactive? Probably inactive. Welcome to Kunksville. Anyway. But yeah, dude, I had like, I had so many, what I think are cool shirts from back then, the sports shirts, and I just wish I still had them. My, my biggest one is, is not a sports shirt. It's an actual jersey. And I, I, I got one that's like, um, you know, like a newer version. And it's okay. It's it's actually not great. Uh, but the Randall Cunningham jersey that I had that I loved. And it was that Kelly Green, which is perfect. They should have never gone away from that. And I always liked the Eagles because of him. I'm a Lions fan. That's my team through and through. That's the team I support. I'm not trying to have like seven favorite teams or whatever but i always liked the eagles because of randall cunningham and so like if they made the playoffs and the lions didn't i would root for them and they weren't exactly like some powerhouse team either but um in fact they ended up playing each other one year i don't know if cunningham was on that team but we got destroyed but i always liked randall cunningham and so i had that jersey i got that you know like one birthday or christmas and like when we left our house in michigan we sold it to family, like a family moved in. So some of the stuff that we left there, we figured we'd get back. And just something happened over the years and they moved out, never got my never got my Cunningham jersey back. It was so slick. Anyway, depressing. Not really, not the end of the world. Like I said, I got I got one now, but it's it's kind of it's kind of cheap material. I need I need to get I need to get a legit one. My sister and I actually saw him in the airport one year, one one time. Um, there was a delay uh, on our flight, so we were I think we were leaving Vegas, and he was there. And you know, larger guy, like not huge, but you could definitely see like athlete vibes. Swagged out too, like had like a real cool looking leather trench coat on, basically looking like freaking Morpheus. Um, had some jewelry, nothing crazy, but like put together real well. And I, I was recognized. I was like, I think it's freaking Randall Cunningham. So like, I don't want to be a douche and like go bother him. H Henry remembers this story. He loves this story. Um, but I, I didn't want to like be totally in his face. But we were there for a while. The delay was was long. And so after a while, I didn't even ask for anything. I just said, Hey, Mr. Cunningham, I thought you were the man. Just want to tell you that. And he was like really nice. Oh, thank you so much. Shook my hand. It was a cool experience. But um, yeah, that's when I met Randall Cunningham. I should have asked him for a jersey. I botched that one. Oh well. All right, team is set on offense. Herbeck can be the pinch hitter. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna move it to don't play against lefties unless you absolutely have to. Because he's just not good against them. He's just not great, Bob. We don't really have a pinch runner on the team now. That's like premium. That's okay. It kind of goes against a lot of what our team was founded on, if you will with our speed component, but you know, let's not cry about that. Let's see who's killing it right now. Oh, Sosha's on fire. Robbie Thompson with four yaks already. Speaking of Kent Herbeck and Lofton, how many how many MVPs Lofton got? Four? Four MVPs, baby. I swear that he had this little sign on that game. I'll, I'm gonna watch the playback. I'm gonna watch the video back and see, but I swore he was the other one on the field that had the little gold glove symbol. Who else could it have been? We didn't get a second one. And that mail's gone, by the way, so I don't know what I'm... I was going to go back and look at it. Anyway. Anyway. Pitching. Who's doing the thing? 
Okay, Steve Hernandez and Langston are great. Nagy's been fine, and Fernandez. Fernandez hates pitching in April, dude. I swear to God, he's been gotten off to a bad start every season. And it's not actually this isn't even that bad. Like this is the deception of ERAs, by the way. 525. The first thing when you hear that, you're like bad, right? That's the instant thought. You don't need context. You don't need extra. You're like bad. 525. That's terrible. I would, wouldn't want that on my fantasy team. I wouldn't want that on my favorite team. And or at least maybe f- for me, I don't want to project. Maybe I'm maybe I'm out on a limb here. But when I think that an instant judgment is bad, I don't have to figure anything else out. 525 is too high. It's really it's really not that bad though. Obviously, you can't maintain it for a full year and be you know a competent major leaguer. Um, Unless you were just super unlucky and the team realized that and they kept pitching you and you just kept being unlucky and they couldn't believe it. But I understand that you got to be under five. But look at that game. Look at these, uh, the game log here. Six and four, six and three. He is this close. First off, he's one run away from having a 450 ERA, which has a much different perception. 450, you're like, okay, that's that's fine. It's like not great, not not bad. One run away into 525, he's trash. Now, I know off two starts, you're not making a judgment one way or the other, but what if he's like doing this for eight starts? Six innings in every single one, he's just doing three, four, three, four. He's keeping us in the game. We won both of the games. It's almost like maybe there is, you know, the kind of a path where a 525 ERA guy isn't that incompetent. And yet, we hold guys to a standard where that. That doesn't that doesn't survive. Was there anybody that qualified for the ERA title? Which means you had to have 162 innings that that had that high of an ERA. I don't think so. What what, what was it? 525. There's two: Dallas Keuchel, 528, and Patrick Corbin, 582. And we think that they sucked last year. That they're so cooked. Oh my God, we cannot touch them in fantasy. They're so done. And there it is. Like, it's, I'm not here to say it's good, right? It's objectively bad on the, all the measures that, that, that we judge on. And I apologize for this tangent. The video's getting late. One person's going to view this tangent. We'll be watching the video long enough. Like, it was a 70 ERA plus, which means Patrick Corbin was 30% worse than league average. All I'm saying is that the margins of what he has to fix to kind of get back to like being Patrick Corbin or even Dallas Keuchel, who I can see the case for Corbin because he still missed some bats, but Dallas Keuchel couldn't strike me out. So as far as getting back in on him for fantasy, it's harder for me to see the appeal. But this exercise is, is showing me like even he with such a bad season was probably just a couple adjustments away and maybe some better batted ball luck from having a perfectly capable Dallas Keuchel season, which would have been like a 450 ERA. Anyway, bottom line is we see these two starts from Fernandez. We say, oh, he's been the worst. He's trash. He's been fine. Looks like he hasn't been really any worse than Nagy, right? Nagy actually has the same exact earned runs count in one extra inning. And I said Nagy wasn't too bad. And I immediately was like Fernandez bad in my head just because of the four versus the five. So there, there's an unplanned uh, discussion on ERA and and what our snap judgments can do to mislead us at times uh, about a player. Because I, I think if Corbin and Keuchel rebound this year, people would be blown away and be like, oh my God, they ri- they've risen from the dead. And it's like, well, not really. They've risen from from being off, no doubt, from, from p- pitching uh, poorly at times last year for sure, but they probably don't have to reinvent themselves to come post three something ERAs this year. So don't be surprised if Corbin and Keiko pop up, especially Corbin, because he misses some bats. And when he's going, he's really missing bats. Anyway, bullpen's been up and down. What are the whips looking like? 480. Oh my God, Mel Rojas. Norm Charlton does not have a BABIP. We love that. Or does not have a whip, excuse me. We love that too. We would love a zero Babbitt as well, but that would be less sustainable. I mean, actually, no, it wouldn't be. Both <laughs> less sustainable than the zero whip. All of it's unsustainable, but it's very good. All right, last thing we wanted to do was possibly get a starter for Levon. Even though he's off to a good start, I'm still going to trust. I'm 
Still going to trust the bottom line, y'all. And he's still allowing a lot of homers. I, I still think that the, the larger sample is worth being trusted here. He only gave up two runs in a 10-hit game. That's pretty fortunate. This was a great outing. And the the most recent one was meh. I'm not I'm not gonna not gonna wait around to see how this story ends. I think we know. So let's see what we've got. We might be able to go big. If the right guy's here, we'll go big. I'm not afraid. Smolty. That's pretty nice, but he's way above he's way above recent price. I don't quite have this much. Oh wait, this is the other people wrong for this man. I'm trying to trick people. That's so scummy. So this is 38k. What 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 are they think? What do they think they're getting here? So this guy's trying to do like just make people think it's the other Pedro that does go, I think, for over a milli. Like, oh, I'm getting a discount. But then these people are like, they're gonna see that one, and then maybe they'll buy mine that's 10x cheaper. It's like unless a mission comes out that drastically changes things, you don't see price differences like this. So what are y'all doing? Stop it. Just price it appropriately so I can get Pedro Martinez on the team. Because I want to do that. I'd love to get Maddox, but we don't have the we don't have the cheese for that. I'm not putting in any more cheese for this purchase. We gotta go with what we got, which I know y'all can't see, but it's 130 it's 130k. We got some bread. Oh rocket. Oh never mind, he's super expensive. <laughs> like I like I thought he'd just be super cheap like come on paul you're an idiot although it's all about how they're how they're able to be acquired it's not necessarily about their talent because dwight gooden's every bit is good and he's 30 g's and i was gonna say and he's joining the team but then i saw oral hersheiser y'all and i love oral hersheiser i tell you what my fandom of oral hersheiser you know where it was born where it really ex exploded MLB The Show. My MLB The Show heads will know he's a god in MLB The Show. Um, it's insane. He's I, I guarantee he's had a ton of new fans because of it that probably, like, if they see him at a Dodgers game or something, they probably love him because of that. They're like, oh, you're a dope announcer, but you're a badass in MLB The Show. That's why I love him. He's so good. I think I want to go Oral Hershiser first over Dwight Gooden. I know Dwight Gooden better he's better he's also cheaper <sighs> maybe we should just go with him first especially because Hershizer's tracking a little high now he does have some missions but I've seen I've seen him I've seen him closer to this price Dwight Gooden is pretty godly the bang for buck here 30k for this come on okay let's do that Dwight Gooden was a god. Let me, I need to get some stats and stories on Dwight for the next video. I need to start doing that more of diving in on some of these players. I've, I've had a few passing stories here and there about players, but one of the reasons I wanted to do this was to dive in more about specific players. So we got to do that for sure. All right. We got a new secondary ace, our second 100. We, we made two big upgrades. You know, we went uh, diamond, bronze to diamond, and silver to diamond, or silver to 100. So we made two giant upgrades. I have veered a little bit away from the, oh, simulate, because it's about to simulate the game. I veered away a little bit from the earning the points via our performance, and I'm going a little bit more loose with it. That said, I, I don't think that the team is progressing too quickly or becoming too OP. Um, I, plus I also said when we get to bronze we would just go with like what we could afford and we have cheese we got bread I keep saying cheese and bread I don't know why ignore me but I, I should just get going because it's about over but we got three 100s now so yeah let's let's take a look at this real quick I want this sim to come through before I leave and we should open these packs we got two 100s five diamonds eight golds eight silvers and two bronze that's a that's pretty good team makeup we're in our sixth season seventh seven three four five six seven season seven 
I think that's a decent trajectory of where we're going. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see if we got another dub. Let's go, let's go 12 and 2. Come on now. One time, what do you say? One time, what do you say now? Let's go. Oh, and extra as we pop off. Ken Herbeck. Oh, he wasn't he wasn't scared of that knuckleball cheese, nor Ken Giles blowing smoke. Norm Charlton did blow the game though, but then Ken Giles said, I can do that too. Watch this. Actually, Jeff Robinson screwed the pooch with Norm Charlton's runners. You know, to be fair. Ken Cal Daniels, welcome to the team. One for four with two ribs. We love it. All right, excellent. Let's open these packs. I don't know why I did it like that. We're just gonna open the two that we have. We're looking for an 80s or 90s card. Something in diamond would be hot. Even a neat little gold. By the way, I'd be remiss not to bring up the, the uh, Jeff Kunkel edition as well. I don't wanna leave anybody out. He's also been added to the team for Harold Reynolds. So it was a three upgrade day. I, I will put a cap for this year. I will say, ah, Liam Hendricks. I will say no diamond upgrades. So no taking a bronze, silver, or gold to diamond without a playoff appearance. That's for sure and no 100 without winning it. Okay, because we just added 100 kind of free and easy you know, coming off of a wild card loss season. Probably shouldn't be made, probably should be able to make that big of an upgrade, okay? But we had the money. Again, I didn't set everything 100% strict on, on how we would do this. I had the ideas about earn the points we've earned, but we earned so many early that like we're, we're way ahead. <laughs> That's that's why. So what I learned, by the way, for, if I do this in the future, bring it down. Because if you have that early success in those lower leagues, you're going to have so much money, uh, so many points that, you know, it's, it's too much. I, I, I maybe I've wanted a little bit slower burn, but I'm pretty happy with where we're at. Uh, slower burn in terms of our success is what I mean. Not, not in terms of the team trajectory. I like where it's building. But I almost wish we had to work a little bit harder to get the titles instead we get three out of the shoot so maybe next time i would start with i mean but we only had one diamond one gold i don't know we were just insane early on but now we're kind of working our way up and i like this 70 to 88 to 94 this year we got to drop 100 we got to drop 100 wins that's all there is to it i'll have an update out later this week um and we will be on the consistent twice a week so that you guys see the setup of of where we're going into the playoffs and then update after the season so they'll be close together i still think that like a, a tuesday or wednesday episode that just kind of does it like our wednesday thursday i should say does like a check-in but then like a, a player feature right like let's talk about paul molitor and then yeah we go through the stats or whatever but then i do some shit about paul molitor that's what i think the midweek one could be and then um the other two are just updating the team, talking about the playoffs, building the team, and all that. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Take care.